Are we ready to rock and roll? Good morning. Aloha. We're still in Hawaii. What a lovely trip. Come on in. Good morning. Aloha. Are you there? Early to the party. We're always early, aren't we? It's got to be that way. Hey, there's nothing worse than missing the bus. Have you ever missed a bus on a trip before? I'm trying to think, have I? I don't think so. I don't remember. Come on in. Grab a seat. Where's my tea? I know I have a cup of tea. Everybody happy? Hey, I can see life. We're coming up to the weekend and the sun is shining, so I'm a little bit apprehensive because I'm concerned that half of Britain's going to go to the beach again. But it's not going to be me and it probably isn't going to be you. So we, we have to stay safe and happy and creative, don't we? And that's why we're in the Shack Shack. Be all right. Stuart's with us today. Stuart, just do us a favour <clears throat> and just let me know that the sound is good, would you, darling? Thank you. Right. How are you? How are you? Do you like the weekends? They all blend into one, don't they, the days? Hey? It's going to be all right. Oh. Mark called me last night which I was very glad about, our Mark, who lives in California, because I was starting to worry a little bit there. But he's OK. He's been in Utah at a big wedding. Lucky boy. Yeah, his, his, um, his girlfriend, Alex's brother, got married. He's quite big in the NBA, and so because of the season, they had to move the wedding. Mm. Oh, no. It's not what you know, it's who you know, see? So, that, so, so Mark went to a really posh wedding. Lucky boy. I'm glad he's having a good life in California. I mean, what chance did we have? Hmm? Crowborough, San Francisco. Choices, choices. <laughs> Same with Grace. Crowborough, New York. Let me think, let me think. <laughs> and because they've got dual citizenship, it was easy, wasn't it? See ya. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go life is exactly as it should be it may not be as we'd like it to be but I believe that it's exactly where it's supposed to be right now right now is exactly where it's supposed to be for us and for you and for me poor old Dave he's got a bad foot at the moment can't walk so that slowed him down <laughs> yeah it's all right though Right, come on, let's have a cup of tea and then we can get going. We've got to sort Hawaii out because today we have to catch the plane home. We've been there two weeks. It's been lovely. I've loved every minute of it. I said to Dave today, because he said, oh, I think I liked Holland best. Dave did. And I said, well, um, I like Hawaii best because at the moment I'm in Hawaii. And... And it's been the memories in Hawaii that I've loved, you see. So it doesn't matter whether the doodles are that way or that way, or if the hula girl looks like her, like she needs a diet. It doesn't matter. Hula girls come in all shapes and sizes, by the way, just so you know. It's not about the result to me. It's about the process. And these two weeks have been absolutely wonderful. It's certainly done the job. They hit the spot in my head. And that's really all it was about. So come on in. Come on in and because um, it's not a test. We're not being judged. It's not a competition. It's not which is the best artwork or it's just about hanging out together with a bunch of people, friends now, who are in the same boat because we're all in the same boat. Do you know, I got a lovely letter from a lady in New Zealand called Linda today and she and quite a few of her mates in Auckland are doodling along with us. So greetings, friends in New Zealand. Where are you? Where are you? See, I find that brilliant, that, that we're reaching out. We're so lucky, really. You know, people go on about Facebook, and it can be quite a, a minefield, can't it, Facebook? But, you know, for us, what a miracle it is in the lockdown, you know, that we can just reach out to people in New Zealand and Canada and the United States and all over the world. Tell us where you are. Tell, there was a lady in Thailand yesterday I saw. Thailand. I've never been to Thailand. 
I've never been to Thailand. If I have, I don't remember it. <laughs> right. And on that happy note, sound is good, says Stuart. Stuart's in the building with you. So please ask him any questions. We've got loads of stuff going on. It's 10 o'clock. Let's get going. And I'll, I'll as we doodle and, and colour, I'll, I'll fill you in on what's going on at Clarity. So welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. Let's get going because we're nearly there now. It's our last day. Let's have a look, shall we? Are you ready to go? Not hustling. If we don't finish it, it's not the end of the world. You've got time to finish it. It's your art, isn't it? I've seen some lovely stuff. Some of the pictures that are, um, have been posted on Facebook. So beautiful. So gorgeous. I'm so, I'm so chuffed. You know, when I see that, I just... I love it and I get private messages and yeah, it's, it's, we're doing something very special here. Right. So this is where I left off yesterday. See, I'm not worried whether it's brilliant or not brilliant. I just want to get into it and finish it because I like, I like finishing things to you as well. I like a bit of project completion. Mostly I sort of have to dash off in another direction. But i tell you what I'd like to do first, because I want to tone down the whiteness. Remember we said about the vintagey thing? So the first thing I want to do, see the background, the bits behind the pictures, I want to put a kind of a real, a kind of a, 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 a glaze, not a glaze, a real thin layer of colour over the, over the background. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to get the flat of the pencil and if you're using pergoliners, there's a really beautiful peach colour. I tried it out earlier. Which one is it? It's the peachy one. And I thought, oh yeah, if I was on the pergoliners, that's the one I would use. It's the B9. B9, be nice. Yeah, there you go. It's a little bit darker than the ivory, uh, the cream one in the per. But I think I might use both, you know. I might have a little, yeah, 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 because they blend nicely. Okay, light one first. And what we're going to do, are you ready? Girls and boys, I want to put a ye this lovely creamy colour. I want to tone down that white. Whatever you've got in front of you, you need to be toning down that white. And we're using the chisel, see? So you can get a really smooth, easy... Don't press hard, though. And then we'll just go in there and we'll get this lovely cream colour. I'm not going to rush. But I do want to sort it out. <laughs> so I won't waffle so much today. Come on. Right. There you go. That's that. Now the middle one. Because, see, we put down this undercoat first. And then we can put the drop shadows in. Put the, put the undercoat in first before the drop shadows. That definitely works best. See, already it's starting to tone it down. It's funny, isn't it, how just a, something that simple... Right, let's go around this side. You see, now this is begging to have something in it, but I, I honestly, I think that there's so much action here. I saw somebody's up where they put a beautiful turtle in there. That looked great. Really nice. Um, so, you know, if you want to put something in there, then don't don't colour this bit in. Just leave it open and you can, you can do it at the weekend, can't you? Hey? Eh? I have decided, I hope, I hope that you're cool with this. You've been going on at me to do this, so I, I hope that you're in agreement with it now because you've been saying it all along, that I, I, I want to take a week off next week. So when we get back from Hawaii today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to down, down tools, down pencils and pens for a week. And I just want to, I need to sort out a few things and work out what's going on with Dave and uh, I want to go and see my parents and pay a few bills and go to work and have a look what's going on there. You know, lots. I've got lots of things to do. Come on in. Good morning, good morning. Let me just have a quick sip of tea. So what I was thinking was, what I was thinking was that we could have a break. And, you know, not just for me, but for you as well. It will give me a chance to catch up and it will give you a chance to catch up because I know loads of you have, you know, 
you don't get a chance to catch up. If you joined us in, in Japan, you haven't been able to get to the other place. Or if you joined us in Africa, you haven't been able to get to Japan yet because we've been plowing through. I mean, talk about round the world in 90 days or however long it took. Was it 80 days? <laughs> I can't remember. But you certainly didn't do it in 14 weeks. Now, let's have a look. So I was thinking that we would just take a little break I'm sure that you're in agreement and um, and then that allows me to catch up and stop for a minute and regroup and clear my head. You know, like you remember the old etcher sketch where you go like that and then it all just used to. I used to love that. I used to doodle along and it go up and down. And like, what a brilliant. Do you remember that silver thing? And you'd make little geometric patterns and then and then you would build pictures. And then when you'd finished, you just go like that and it'd all be cleared again. Yeah, that's what I need to do in my head next week. Just clear, have a bit of a wipe, right? Defrag or whatever you call it. And then that will give you good people at home a chance to catch up and down tools because you're turning up every morning at 10 o'clock, which is a phenomenal accomplishment as well. Don't always be patting me on the back. You need to give yourselves a pat on the back. You know, that's what I call dedication. 10 o'clock every morning religiously, whether you live in Canada or, or Cornwall. I mean, blimey, you know, it's f fantastic, really. And so this will give you a chance to catch up. And Steve and Stuart, the guys at work who, who've got my back every step of the way, they're going to put together. I said, well, what we could do is do a day trip. We'll plan a day trip. So day trips every day. So next week, starting on Monday, and I'll, I'll drive it through the blog. We're going to do day trips and we're going to recap. So Monday will be Japan and Tuesday will be, uh, where did we go then? New Mexico, I think, didn't we? God, that seems like ages ago. And then the next one will be Africa. And then we went to Holland. And, then blah, 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 blah. and so we're going to use each day as an opportunity to have a little recap, look at some of your beautiful artwork, you know. So you're not alone. We're not, I'm not just going, right, see you in a week's time. We're going to keep going and we're going to keep you company. You know, but we're going to do it without me standing here steering the, steering the bus just for a week. OK, you up for that? Cool. Come on then. Keep going. Da, 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 da. Right. So I've done a bit of yellow there. Bit of yellow around the aloha. Let's do that. I saw something really funny on Facebook today. I curled up. Dave showed it to me. I think it might have been one of you that posted it. It said, it said, this year I can't go to Hawaii because of COVID-19. Usually it's because I'm poor. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I can't go to Hawaii this year. Ah, oh, why's that? Well, you know, flights, social distancing, pandemic. <laughs> Brilliant. If you could go anywhere, anywhere, anywhere in the world, anywhere, like anywhere, I'll say it again, anywhere. <laughs> if you could go anywhere in the world, just in case you didn't hear it the first time, where would you go? Come on, write it down. Where would you go if you could go anywhere? <laughs> I don't know. Dave said he'd like to go to New Zealand. Yeah, I don't know. At the moment, I'm quite happy staying at home, actually. My head is not go not in globetrotter mode at the moment. Look how that tones that down, doesn't it? Just that. There you go. I just wanted to get a result so that we could finish. <laughs> there we are. Now we've got the first layer in. Doesn't that look better? Right, now go back over it. Are you using the peachy colour or the creamy colour? I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to those, you know those additional pencils I said we're buying in? I'm looking forward to the different greys that we haven't got in our tin and um, there's an ivory. I reckon that ivory is going to come in really handy. I've just got a feeling because it's like an off-white, isn't it? Mm. I'm looking forward to the ivory. Rather like the cream. Right, so have we got... Doesn't that already look better? I think so. And then I think we could add a little bit of shade. If you've got that peachy one, see, I wonder if I just slightly go over peachy. You could use peach. 
Or, where's my favourite? Where's my absolute go-to always? Go on, see if you know which one it is before I use it. <laughs> Old habits die hard. See if you can guess it before I even put it on the paper. Which one would I put on here now to tone it down? What do you think? Yeah, of course I have. Warm grey number two. Does it, is it spelt like my name? No, it's with an E. With an E. I spell my name with an A. Funny enough, so does my dad. <laughs> I think it's Scottish, isn't it, with an A? My, my grandparents are Scottish. They didn't speak with a Scottish accent. My nan, she spoke more with a Geordie accent. She was from, she she was brought up in South Shield. But like my my dad's name, what what they do, what what the, the Scottish tradition is of. Um, I may be wrong here, but I think they take the mother's maiden name and they make that the child's middle name. So my dad, his name is John Gordon Gray because he was. Because his mum's maiden name was Gordon, mm -hmm. which is a good Scottish name, isn't it? And and um, and my granddad's name, his lovely middle name, his name was John Sutherland Grey because he was from the Sutherland clan. Isn't that nice? Mm. And I thought I'm going to take that idea and run with it. So my kid's middle name is Grey. So it's Mark Gray Bowers, which is the name of their father, and Grace Gray Bowers. So I thought, regardless of what happens, they're always going to have that attach, that, that connection to the mum, which I think is rather nice, don't you? Right, that'll do. That'll do. Should we do a bit of drop shadow? Drop shadow next. Drop shadow. So I'm going with a light grey pencil, but you can go HB. You can do your lead pencil trick. You can do that one, can't you, to do a drop shadow. What we want to do now is get some, let's just do one of these so you can always finish it afterwards. So let's just do it. I wonder if I come in on this camera, if it's a little bit tighter. Yes, right. So here, for example, let's come in here. And what we're gonna do is go slowly, look circular like that around the outside. Just gently. You don't want like a band. It's what you don't want. So you want to kind of really, you just kiss in the paper, you know? Just kiss in the paper with this light grey. That's it. So you just go a bit of cross hatching. See, I'm going that way, then I'm going that way. Yeah, I reckon that's probably the best way to do it. Okay. So just gently, you do it all in layers. Don't you? See? Come in that side. There we are. Come in this side. There we go. And you go up that side there. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Where are we? Let me just see. Let me put my pen there. There we go. So now this postcard or photograph is in front of this one. So now I need to come in here and I need to drop this one. See? So now that one's getting dropped behind that one, isn't it? Then we're coming around the flowers as well. There we go. So whatever's behind gets a shadow, see? But this light grey, what light grey am I using? I mean, you could use the light grey. I'm, go I'm going with cold grey three. Yeah, that'll do. It just is not too dark. It just gives you a, a little bit of a drop. There you go. Because we're going to go back again with the... With a darker grey, we can go back with a darker grey, but just for now, this will do, you see? Won't it? Get in here. And as you go around, you realise all the bits you've missed, look. <laughs> Don't you? We've done so much in this picture. There's so much, isn't there? I love it. I love it. Let's have a look. Right, so you get in there, flip your pencil. This one, we've already done a bit of shading in this one, haven't we? Yeah, this is looking good. So let's just say 
What happened here? Oh yeah, so that's got to be dark as well, hasn't it? Because that's darker down there. So you get all your contrast, you see. And then you've got that one there over the top of that one. Now we need a darker grey though, because we're getting, it's just going dirty. Dirty. Right, so now, we're all right with this. Are we happy enough? Come on, it's only quarter past ten. We're whistling through this. I know, what you know what it is. It's because we know we've got a plane, <laughs> we've got a plane to catch. But, I mean, you could, you could take it on the plane with you. It's a hell of a flight. I mean, you could you could start from scratch in 15 hours, people. <laughs> what do you do when you go on long haul flights? What do you do? Do you just watch films? I am. Um, I listen to books. They usually send me to sleep. Audible. Do you do Audible? Audible's brilliant. If you if you if you want a recommendation. You know, like, if you want something to do, sign up for an Audible account on Amazon and then just download books and listen to books. They're listening books. But I tell you, it's, my, it's been my, my salvation. That and the doodling. Um, I love Audible books. I'm right in at the moment. I'm right into Kate Morton. She's a, I think she's Australian. Um, and I've just, I've just eaten them up. She's got a really amazing way of writing books. And she sort of, she keeps flipping backwards and forwards between the years. It's like a kind of a, a mystery. And you don't really know. And she sort of feeds you t on a timeline. So she drops between First World War and 2010. Then she goes back to the First World War. Then she goes to 1960. So you keep dropping in and out of different time frames, depending on which character she's alluding to. And it's really clever. So at the moment I'm doing, it's called uh, Distant Hours by Kate Morton. But I've, I've done some, yeah, I think I've read loads of hers now. So that's what I do on flights. Uh, I sleep, if I can. Films, films. What about you? What do you do? Because we've got, a, we've got a, a long haul coming. So you could take a little tin of pencils, couldn't you? And you could, oh, doesn't this look nice? It looks gonna look so good when you start to drop it in. So we've done the background, you see. Don't worry about the girls and all that. We'll do all that as well. One thing at a time. So we take the light grey. We bring the light grey in like that. Right. Just shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Lightly, lightly, lightly. So you don't want a big band. Okay. It's going to look really nice. See, this is where I wish I had the ivory pencil so that I could do the, f the picture, the actual photos a bit darker. I'll come up with something, though come up with something so you do the light gray and then you get in tighter oh, not that tight right okay underneath the photo so you just kiss that kiss the edge of the picture like that nice let's have a look from above see if it looks yeah you can see it now can't you and if it's too stripy underneath, it looks too extreme, then go back in with the grey, the lighter grey, and just feather it out a little bit so it's not quite so bad, you know, like a big black stripe underneath. So you just dirty it up a little bit. I'm sure there's a better expression. There you go, blend it in a bit. See? Looks good, doesn't it? How are you doing? We're we getting there yet? Long haul flights, core. Cool. I've done plenty of them. Oh, done plenty of them. I've done California a few times. We used to take the children home to see their dad. Oh, 12 hours. 12 hours, Heathrow to San Francisco. Gutty. Gutty with two little children. I can tell you. <laughs> you want to try that one? <laughs> I, my heart always goes out to mums when they're on their own with two kids. You think, yeah, I've been there, done that. Hardcore. My two were all right, though. 
they were actually really good. I, I learned very early on in that game that you just dedicate yourself to the children until they fall asleep. Forget about watching films. Forget about doing anything other than focusing on the children and keeping them happy. And if it meant reading, if it meant playing little games with them, yeah, it worked fine. You just had to just concentrate on the kids until they nodded off. They only want your attention. They were good. Grace and Mark were seasoned travellers, I tell you. Seasoned travellers, they are. Right, there you go. So you can see how your building is so amazing. When you when you put a little drop shadow in, see how they're building up these? It's good, isn't it? I love it. Yeah? Time for a slug of tea. Have a little catch-up. Cool. Is you, your neck? Yeah. We've got TV shows on Sunday, 2 to 4, and then 6 o'clock, the ODS. Really lovely stamps on Sunday uh, on Hochanda. Home of Crafts, Hobbies and Art, hochanda.com. Um, two to four o'clock, it's Clarity Classics, you'll love it. And then at, uh, at six o'clock, I do definitely need to stop for a minute. At six o'clock, it's ah um, oh, the, the Linda Williams Garden Collection. Oh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I've never seen so many stamps in a compendium like that, a collection. Beautiful. And the quality is just they're so crisp and beautiful. Garden stamp. And the groovy plates are on there as well. So I think you'll really like them. I hope you do anyway. Um, right, so let's have a look. I know where we're going next. Let's have a look. I think we ought to now look at the hula girls. Can we do that? Yes, I think that's a good idea. Right, so we're going to go to the hula girls now. Uh, I reckon they'll have black hair. I do think so. The Polynesians and the natives, they certainly do have black hair. So, so let's put some black hair in. Pergoliners, pencils, polychromos. Let's just add a little bit of black. It doesn't have to be solid black, does it? It just has to be dark. There you go. This will start to add interest. Did you do, did you do Hula Girls? They were great, weren't they? They were great. I think the thing with this artwork as well, what we're learning in our... Shall I come in a bit closer? I seem like miles away. On, it was all right when we were doing the big background, but maybe now we could come in a bit tighter. Come, wee! <laughs> there you go. Right. When... Um, that's better, isn't it? You know, when we do this picture, I think... I think one of the freeing things, let me just put this to lean on. One of the freeing things for me is just letting it evolve. And I don't, I don't have a preconception, you know. I kind of, I lie in bed and I think, right, we're going to go to Hawaii. And in my head I think, okay, so we got a rough, and we need a rough idea of where we're going. Right. But I don't have a completely mapped out idea. It evolves as I'm going along. It did in it did in Holland as well. I had no idea. I knew we were going to do a windmill. But apart from that, I was kind of snookered. But what happens is it it um, it evolves, doesn't it? As you. As you. Start to draw your creative juices start flowing, I suppose, and you think, right, I could do that, and, and what about that, and what about if I could put a turtle down there, and I could do this on that, and you've all had that feeling, that, that moment of where you're just free, and you're going for it, and I think it's something to, to develop, that's the word, I think letting your art evolve is, rather than have, um, a totally preconceived, you know, that all you're doing is copying what you've already got in your head, if you see what I mean. Because if, like, if I've got this and then I know, oh, I've just got, I mean, I had to do this because I had to do this. This is what I'm saying. Because um, 
hundreds of you are watching and following, so I've got to be able to know, I've got, you know, I'm the driver of the bus, so I've got to have a rough idea where I'm going. But what I mean is in your art, when you're working, like, it's, it's, it's more freeing and probably better for your art and for your head if you, if you just let it evolve, let it open up and say, oh, well, I could do this. And then if something doesn't work, then don't throw your arms in the air and bin it. All you're doing, if you say it, you, your idea didn't work, that's because you're comparing what's happened with the preconception that you had. But if you just let it travel and let it move and go with the flow, what you'll find is you'll, you'll enjoy it more for a start because you're not tripping up every five minutes because you've done something wrong in your head because it's not exactly... Uh, in tune with your preconception of what you were, you know, uh, you get what I mean. I think it's just key that you just kind of go with the flow and let it evolve. Yeah, I think you get what I mean. And then, I remember when um, when I first started using the gel press and um, I nearly drove myself potty because I was striving for perfection. And and when, if any, you, many of you will have used a jelly plate or a gel press by now. And the, you will know that it's completely unpredictable. You, you can't guarantee the outcome. There are so many different variables from the paint to the amount of paint to the drying time. You know, you can't guarantee a print. You can, the more you practice, probably the more control you get over the paint and what have you. But ultimately, you can't really, you you can't uh, guarantee the outcome. You can put in all the action and you can follow all the instructions, but it doesn't mean the cake's going to come out of the oven the way you thought it was going to. You know what I mean? And it was the jelly plate or the gel press, that was what really, it kind of set me free really because it, it gave me that breakthrough because in the beginning all I was doing, I just kept throwing everything away because it wasn't the way I wanted it to be and it wasn't perfect and it wasn't exactly, let me think, I'm doing their skirts. What colour should we do the skirt? Should we get that a bit of that dirty colour in there, that yellow? Yeah. Um, this is that ochre. And I found that the, when I let go and just went with the process and just accepted that what I was going to get was what I was going to work with what I've got as well. Oh, I tell you what, there's nothing quite like it. When you realise, when you have that moment of clarity and you think, yeah, of course, you know, it's, it's not about, um, producing a perfect print every time or a perfect picture it's about experimenting and you can't experiment unless you accept the process as it evolves there's the word again it's really it's really important that you don't that you don't see it as as failing if it's not exactly as you foresaw it or um, your your preconceived idea, you know, you can't keep copying it. That's the point, isn't it? How are your hula girls coming? Now, what colour should we make them? Well, they're out in the sun a lot, so they're definitely brown. So I'm thinking, right, I'm thinking I'm going for a nice brown here. What should we use? Ah, oh, I've got loads of browns in both sets should we go how about that one there I bet that's nice oh yeah that's a nice brown look cool wouldn't you want to be that colour well you stay here long enough you will be is that a bit dirty no that's about right yeah let's not get hung up on it right straight over the face if you're wondering how I managed to get those faces in that perfectly, 
it's impossible. <laughs> it's 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 a it's a trick. It's a graphics trick. So what you have to do to get that face that perfect, you have to scan the artwork in. See, this is where I we did this for the download, didn't we? And then you blow their faces up literally like 200, 300, 400 percent, four times as large. And then you can draw them in, can't you? Then you can draw them in. But trying to get that little mouth in. Impossible. There. Impossible. Unless you expand the artwork. So there you go. Now you know the rest of the story. Just in case you were wondering, how did she get those little faces in so lovely? I can't do that. Well, you can if you've got a Mac and an and a Photoshop program. <laughs> there you go. Everybody happy? Core. Cool. Look at this. This is like it's Tantro Pay, hey? Eh? Look at that. Spray tan. A go go. No, they're so. I think everybody looks better when they're a bit brown, don't you? <laughs> when I lived in California, which I did for about five years, I was really brown and really blonde. My hair went white blonde. Your girl's looking good. And get that red again. I need to. I'm now. I'm doing a bit, bit tone in tone. Boring, but I'm, it's the arty in me. I want it. I don't want it too, too colourful. Remember, we were going for that retro look, weren't we? There you go. Nice. Then we need a grey. So we're going for the greys again to get a little bit of. I wonder if that's dark enough. Yeah, that will work. Yeah, just a little bit of a. Shadow there, hey? Nice. See? Light grey does the job. And then their legs are tucked in behind their grass skirts. Of course they are. And that little bit of shadow there. So skirts around a bit of shadow. That leg. It's amazing what you do with a little flash of pencil, isn't it, really? And then they're not levitating, so let's give them a bit of land to stand on. Land in the sand. There you go. Do shadows. That looks more like it. Now suddenly they're actually just a little flick from the toes. There you go. Nice. Meli kaliki The only thing is still a little bit White in the sky, isn't it? Should we take a bit of that? Let's take that blue. The blue's a little bit savage, though. I can't wait till the light blue pencil arrives, but this will do. Right? Side of the pencil for the for the sky. Side of the pencil. We don't want it all the way through. Just a little flash of colour in here. A little flash of colour through here. So we don't want it... thing is, the sky is really blue in Hawaii. <laughs> Glorious. There you go. Just using my finger to stop myself going into the... Right, there we are. No tricks here really, eh? Just a little bit of blue. Yeah, this is going to be nice. Yeah, so you could do this on the plane on the way home, couldn't you? Eh? Oh, hang on. I'm just going to shut the window. The neighbours decided to start gardening. Well, I know it's not Dave because he can't stand up. He wouldn't do that anyway if we were up here working, would he? There you go. So. Right. And do you remember yesterday I was talking about my little epiphany with the... There you 
go. Don't want to make it too dark though, do we? And now I'm going to use my trick from yesterday and I'm going to find, pick a nib, any nib, because I only want the, the hard end, so to speak, this end here. And then I'm going to just, I'm going to smooth this out. It works, it's such a treat, especially on big expanses like this, look, where you don't want too much. You just want a little whisper of colour. Here we go. Excellent. Look. Get in there. I'm glad I worked that out. Because you couldn't do that with the, with the fine end. Not without crushing it. So you'd get one use only out of it. But this is great because I can use this again and again and again. Nice, nice, nice. So now we've got the sky in that one, haven't we? Do you know what I think we need to go to now? Well, the sand, we know how to do the sand. Can we do aloha? Can we do aloha together? Aloha. Let's do aloha. And I was going to go with red. And then I thought, mm, all right, is that red too bright, I said. Look, so what I did was, I did it really bright and then I toned it down. I went back in with a darker red. And then I thought, well, okay, I quite like that, right? I quite like that a lot, actually. <laughs> so we'll use the light red. See, if you want it, I started by trying to do, you know, like ribbon writing. So you leave a bit of whiteness to make it look like it's wrapped. Like we've got stamps that... So, for example, you could say that if the sun is hitting this side of the, say this big sun here is hitting the side of the, um, let me just show you. I'm not saying that this is what we're going to do, but say, for example, the sun is hitting that side of the letter. Do you see what I mean? And it would probably hit this part here as well. Right. So you leave that bit white and then maybe it would, it would you leave that bit white as well. Just let me show you. So when you're when you're colouring in tri like ribbon writing like this, you can see where I'm going. So that what that stays white. Let me just. It's all right. I can always infill it if I don't like it. I can infill it. So that's like so, and then that's like so. See? Do you see what I'm getting at? So it looks as if it's being touched. By the sun, sun kissed. There you go. So you want to get your pencil again. You use the flat, and you know, and then if that, so so you could do that all the way through, and you could get a kind of a sun hitting it, couldn't you? You get it, or you could forget that and just go solid red, like a stencil, and then put a drop shadow on. It's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to, I want to take the ache out of it for myself and just relax into this. So I'm just going to go really lovely, light colour through here. Because I've said it many, many times now. It's about the process. It's about, I know that many of you like learning tricks. So you could do a printout, you could do a digital printout, couldn't you? Because we gave you the digi print out of this. And you could print it out and you could see which one you prefer. Try one with a drop shadow. Try one, I'm going quite light with this light colour here. Don't go over the edge if you can avoid it, Barbara. So that, the way to avoid it is to sharpen your pencil a bit. Right, just sharpen your pencil a bit. Just get the nib tighter, then you can get in more, see? That's better. What glasses am I wearing? <gasps> Look at that. 40 minutes in before she realises she's not wearing her Dame Edna's. <sighs> right. Let's get the sharp bits in with while the pencil's still sh sharp, where I need to have a sharp pencil. That's a good idea. So while the nib's still sharp, I'll go in the bits 
that need a sharp nib, if you get what I mean, before it starts to go blunt again. Just saves me having to keep sharpening, because every time you sharpen the pencil, you lose a little bit more of its life, don't you? Mind you, it's a tool. It's a tool. Hey? So that makes sense, doesn't it? Go in the tight bits while you can. I love colouring in. I find it one of the most relaxing exercises. Because it is an exercise, it's like a workout, isn't it? Doesn't it look fabulous? Hey? Okay. That's alright. I'm just in the zone. Totally in the zone. So what's today? Friday. Right, groovy digital download. On Fridays, every Friday, we offer up a free groovy project, don't we? So this Friday, it's, it's going to be another lovely one. So if you're getting into the sort of the, the groovy side of life, <laughs> That's another really great pastime. Um, then these are great little sort of starting out projects. Beautiful. Very nicely done. Hazel helps us with those. Hazel Edwards. Great friend. So kind of her. So she's uh, she does that every Friday for us. Which is brilliant. And they're just perfect starting projects. So... Big shout out for Hazel. Thank you, Hazel. I know she doodles with us as well. I've known Hazel for many, many years. I've got some good people around me, you know? Really good people. They've got my back. And it's important. It's important to have good people in your life. I think that's... And the older I get... The pickier I'm getting. <laughs> I think I think that's the way it works, isn't it? In the olden days, anybody just smiled at me and that was it, they were in. They were in my life. But um I think I'm changing a little bit now. So you see I'm just going around gently. Adding, and it's what I said, I've said it many times. You pick up, you, you do, you work in layers, you see? So I go back up that way, then I come back down that way, and, and I go into the sharp areas where, you know, the little delicate areas with the sharp. Sometimes you can just flick, flick your pencil and get in there. <sighs> see? Nice, huh? Just get in there with that one. Right, so those are the sharp parts. Right, so it looks quite ready, doesn't it? Like Christmas red. Hmm. Which red am I using? This one is ge Pale Geranium Lake. Pale Geranium Lake. So we've got Pale Geranium Lake going on. All right. Now, let's have a look. I love this. I love it. I love the writing. Did you have a good time with the writing, the cursive stuff? Did you? Did you work it out? It's nice to have letters that you can colour in like this. Right, when you've done that, have you got a darker red there? I mean, you can always press with the same one, just make it darker, can't you? But should we give it a go? Let's see. Let's have a look. Tell you what I've noticed this week. You know, I said I was on a diet and I've laid off the, well, I haven't completely laid off the carbs, but I've really cut back. No bread, no cake, you know, no stodgy stuff. So I thought, well, you know, 
I like I like fruit. I know Hilda, you said it's full of sugar. I know, but I mean it's got to be better for you. Fruit's got to be better for you than and I love fruit. Fruit's got to be better for you than pork pies and sausage rolls and now that Greg's has opened up the road, we're doomed if we don't sort something out. <laughs> We've got Leanne at work, who's just a Greg fiend. She's up and down that road like a yo-yo, getting sausage rolls. She's a feeder. <laughs> She's a very generous feeder. And we're all tucking into sausage rolls. And they're warm. <gasps> anyway, so I'm on a fruit diet at the moment. And... Um... <laughs> And uh, I, I love, I, what's your favourite fruit? My favourite fruit is cherries. I could do cherries till the, if you had to go and sit on a desert, just pretend, just pretend. You go on a desert island, right, and you can only take one sort of food with you. You can only take one sort of food. You can only take one food. It's got all you can take, nothing else. And you're going to have to eat this food for months until a ship comes by. Right, because you're stuck on that island there and no one can see you. And so you've got to take something. You've got a cooler box. You've got a cooler box. <laughs> Not a hula box, a cooler box. <laughs> what are you going to take? Ghostbusters, what are you going to take? Now, what red can I use? Have I got a darker red going on here? I'm going to use, is that one? That's a little bit pink, isn't it? No, I don't like that. That's, that's not bad. What's that one? Cadmium red. Oh, thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah, probably cadmium red would do the job. Quite, that's quite dark. I, bet I had a better one than that. A better one. Excuse my glottal stop days. Here it is. I told you I had a better one. I knew I did. Dunkelrot. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they just run out of imagination, don't they? This one's called Dark Red. <laughs> 225. That's the one. Right, 225. Dark Red. Or just take your light red and press harder. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in that. Now I'm going to bring in the shadow, but I'm going to bring it in by adding darker red where I... See, so you're getting your ribbon effect... But really, it's more by adding depth, a dark cut. Do you see what I'm getting at? So it's still red, definitely it is red. But I, yeah, you get what I mean, see? So you can add your depth now. Look at that, so there you go, now we're doodling, now we's a doodling. Now that looks cool, do you see what I mean? So you, you just have to decide where do you want to put the, where do you want the highlight to be? Because then you just, you create the highlight by focusing on the low light. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Can you see it? Yeah, of course you can. Right. And then, yeah. I wanted to kind of go through the writing with you so you could see what I'm up to. See, by adding the depth there, you create the light. Go slowly as well. Did you see that film, Lowry, Mrs. Mrs. Lowry? A fantastic film. She was a piece of work, the mother, Lowry's mum. But what I what interested me was um, what was the name of the actor? Really good. God, I've drawn a blank. But he used to sit up in his loft in the attic, and he used to um, he used to draw stick men. You know the matchstick men that he was so famous for. And I was watching, I mean, it's only a, it's a film, right? But I was watching the actor. Oh, come on, tell me his name. 
And what I noticed was he was very specific. Even though it was just a little stick person like that, when he did a little, f when he did a hand or a leg, even though they were matchstick people and, they, and there were crowds of them outside Manchester factories, for example, um, when, he, when he did it, when he, as he painted, he didn't just bosh, 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 bosh and do loads of little stick men. Every single stroke, every paint stroke was considered. Every time he added a, a little flick, he stopped and looked and you could feel his total immersion in the process, you know. And I know he was acting, but I thought, yeah, it, it struck me. It was that, it was that focus on every single individual stroke. And I, and I kind of took that with me from the, from the film. Timothy Spall, that's his name. Timothy Spall. Is that right? Fantastic actor. He did. Tur he, he was Turner as well. He's obviously being stereotyped as a, a painter type. Timothy Spall, that's the man. There, so if I was on a long haul, I'd watch Timothy Spall. <laughs> I'm a poet and I don't know it. There, but you see how we've created that light just by taking a darker pencil in over the light pencil. That looks quite good, doesn't it? I like that. I like that a lot. And then the other thing I was going to say, do you remember I said, right, let me test it before I go, before you do it. And I said, maybe we could add a little flash of colour through here. You know? Look, sorry, I'm out of focus. There. You know I said we need to put something in the background? Well, this might be the answer, red, because we're going to bring in the red from here. Now, whether or not you go with the light colour first, it's that. So I know you'd think to yourself, well, I could take my ruler and just whiz along. Well, I tried that, but it looks better, believe you me, if you just go along with little feathery strokes like this with a pencil. It doesn't take much longer, really. But what you can do when you do this, you see, see how you can blend the colours. So it's darker in that corner. There. And then we can go lighter, perhaps there. And then as it goes in underneath the photograph, we could do a blend. Look. Just lightly go in. Sorry. It's because we're in so tight, isn't it? I'm feeling very relaxed today, though. I am. What about you? Have you got any nice plans for the weekend? Have you got any plans for the weekend? Whatever they are, I hope that they're safe. And I hope that you are creative. You've got loads to keep you going. And then next week we're going to go on a on day trips and have a little recap. And I'm not going anywhere. Apart from to see parents, go and see my mum and dad. I'm going to hang out here. Just need to switch off for a day or a week. Do you, do you know what I mean? Just want to switch off. Free my mind a little bit. Read a bit of poetry. Stare at a few flowers. Do a bit of gardening. Change is as good as the rest, isn't it? That's what they say. But you see how nice this looks? And then by doing it by hand like this, rather than whizzing along a ruler, which was my initial, I thought, yeah, go along a ruler. Whoosh, bush, bush, bush. And I thought, nah, actually, this looks much nicer. Look. Get the text in there. And then on the top one, same again. It's the two that straddle the arrows. If you just put colour in those two all the way round, it will really tie it in nicely. So then you go in the back. Just gives it some sort of finishing trick, doesn't it? 
Ah, oh, it's already time to get on the plane. Well, put all your pencils in a in the tin. Come on, make sure you don't forget your pencil sharpener. You'd be scuba on the plane. There you go. Yeah, we're going to have to go, you know. Otherwise, we're going to miss our flight. It's a hell of a... It's quite a flight to... I think it's about... I can't remember now. Two and a half hours to San Francisco. And then another 12 hours. So you want to put this in your hand luggage. Okay? Put it in your hand luggage so you can have a little fiddle on... Well, both flights, really. Can't you? Right. Nice, nice, nice. I like the aloha, don't you? And then you could colour in your... Yeah. And, oh, hang on a minute. What about the, the sun? The sun. Right, get your cream. Let's just do this one thing. We have to finish on the sun. Right. Get your cream in. Because that will be a nice undercoat. So we get our nice undercoat in. Like so. Nice white yellow like that. Okay. That will do. And then I'm going to take a yellowier. A yellowier yellow? <laughs> Aloha yellow. What's this one? Dark cadmium yellow. Dark Why have I got two dark cadmium yellows? I'm going to have to have a sort out. Right. Yellow's nice. This yellow's nice. And we're going to stay around the edge. Just hang out around the edge of the, the sun. Like that. In behind the palm trees. See, we could put a little bit of... Once you've done the moon, the moon, what am I talking about? The sun. <laughs> she needs she needs a holiday. She definitely needs a holiday. Once you've done the sun, you could always go in with your grey and put a little drop shadow there, couldn't you? Hey? Yeah, nice. You're good at this one. I know you are. We've done this before. Didn't we do a really nice sun in Japan? Yes, we did. Do you remember? Sunset. Beautiful. With a geisha. Yeah, so taking a few days off next week. You too. And then the following week, on the Monday. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to tell you about. So I've had, I put my head, Linda Williams and I, we've put our heads together. And we've said that when, when we come back the week after, we're going to go to Owls. Look how lovely that looks. We're going for the owls, okay? So we're going to do some colouring with the owls. I really hope those pencils arrive in time. We're going to do the owls and we're going to have a hoot. And Linda, she said that she's even going to... I'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll hold her to this. I'm using the nib thing again, just to blend it in a little bit. Because I want to blend it in. Yes, there you go. Uh, she said that she might try and do a Facebook Live... On her phone, <laughs> that I've got to see, and uh, and show us how to do those those owls. Do you remember those brilliant groovy owls that she did? In fact, she's even going to wait for it. Oh, what am I looking for here? Actually, I need to. She's even going to. Um, I just want to break it down a little bit. That's better. It's a little bit too savage. Um, she's going to design a new groovy plate with another owl. A really cool one. So, all things being equal, if we can get these pencils in next week... Oh, yeah, that's better. Here we go. This is brilliant. Yeah, there you are. Doesn't that look nice? Nice, nice. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back and we're going to do owls. OK, we're going to do owls and Linda Williams is getting involved and we're going to have a whole week of owls and to wit to woo, we'll have a hoot. OK, so don't forget your digital download for the groovy. Don't forget on Sunday, two to four and six o'clock in the evening. Lovely stamps, Linda's stamps made. Well, Linda's designs made into stamps. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed our trip to Hawaii two weeks, but now it's time to come home and I, I wish you well. Stay, stay safe. 
have a great weekend and I'll be back here, not next Monday, the Monday after at 10 o'clock in the morning so we all get a break, which is not a bad thing, is it? Okay, regroup and then we'll, we'll start again. So lots of love to you and uh, be safe. Thanks, uh, Stuart. Thanks, Stuart, for helping me today. And, uh, and I will see you on the other side. Lots of love. Safe flight. Bye-bye. Aloha.